right, here are the first 15 things you need to do when you buy a new Samsung phone. Some of these may be applicable only for the flagships. These are some important points to note when you upgrade from your older Samsung phone or when you switch to a brand new Samsung phone. If you like the content on the channel, be sure to subscribe and leave a like for this video if you find it useful. Now let's go ahead. The first one is to restore your old data. There are multiple ways of restoring your data. Let's say if you have already backed up your data on your previous Samsung phone, you will be asked to restore or copy the data while logging into your new phone. Or what you can do is you can go to Samsung Smart Switch application, tap on receive data. As you can see here, we have got a Galaxy device or an Android device. We can import the data from iPhone or iPad. We can also restore the data from Windows phone. And when you tap on a Galaxy or an Android device, it shows either by cable or wirelessly you can restore your data. If you already have your previous phone with you, you can just tap wireless to connect to that phone and restore the data. Another way to do is just go to settings, tap on accounts and backup, restore data. Here it will show you the previous devices if you have already backed up on your previous Samsung phone. Just tap on the device from which you want to restore the data. As you can see here, we have got call logs, messages, contacts, clock, settings, home screen, applications and documents. Everything can be imported or restored on your new phone. I did this and I got all the applications, all the settings, all the contacts, messages and everything back on this new phone, the S22 Ultra. I had no problems whatsoever to switch from that phone. The second one is to check the software update. Go to settings. Scroll all the way down, you will see software update. Just tap on that, tap on download and install. If there is any latest update available for your device, you will be able to install it and that is a must to do. Next one is change the system sound and vibration control based on your preferences. Go to settings, tap on sounds and vibration, system sound and vibration control. Here you can turn on or turn off the toggles for which you don't want the sound and vibration. I generally keep the system sound only for screen lock and unlock as well as charging. Touch interactions, dialing keypad tones, Samsung keyboard tones, I keep it turned off. Now this depends on you. If you want the sound to be there on your keyboard or touch interactions, you can turn this on. And the vibration, I always turn it off because that is going to consume a bit of a battery so I don't keep them on. I suggest you also to turn off these vibrations. Next one is turn on find my mobile feature. This feature will help you to track your phone if at all you lose it. To enable this feature, go to settings, tap on your profile. Here you will see find my mobile option when you scroll down. Just tap on this. Here we have a toggle to turn it on and we have an option to get started. It says lost something, find your Galaxy phone, tablet, watch or earbuds with smart things find. It also says locate and control your phone remotely if it's lost or you forgot how to unlock it. To locate or unlock your phone, go to the website below. Now, I'm not going to deep dive into this. So if you want a separate video on that, you can let me know in the comment section below. I will try and make a video on this and post it very soon. Let me know in the comment section. Next one is add, remove or reorder widgets on the lock screen. Now, we all know that we have got these lock screen widgets on Samsung phones. To customize this, tap on settings, tap on lock screen. Here you will see an option widgets. You can enable or disable the widgets depending on your preferences. And you can also reorder this by tapping on this top right corner option reorder. Just tap on this, press and hold on any particular widget and move it around. You will be able to reorder them like this. Next one is to change the side key functions. Depending on your preferences, you can set the function for the side key. Side keys are nothing but these volume keys and the power key. Let me show you how. Let's go to settings, tap on advanced features. Here we have got an option side key. We have double press, press and hold option. As you can see by default, I have got quick launch camera. I can change it to pay with Samsung pay. And then I have an option to open application you can tap on this and select any particular application to open when you double press the side key. Then we have an option to press and hold, wake up Bixby or power off menu. You can select either of them. The next one is turn on one handed mode on advanced features. Nowadays we have got all these big screen sizes which will be difficult for us to operate with single hand. So we can turn on the one handed mode on advanced features. 
which will shrink the display making it easy to access the entire screen. To enable this let's go to settings, advanced features. Here we have one handed mode just turn on the switch or this toggle. As you can see I have gesture here because I have set the navigation gestures. If you have set the buttons you will be able to select the button here. Now since I have set the gesture I can just swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of the screen to enable one handed mode. This is how we can do it. And to get back to normal just tap on this space that is outside of the screen. Next one is enabling the developer options. Let's tap on settings. Let's go to about phone. Let's tap on software information here. Here you will see the build number. You just have to keep tapping on this multiple times until it says developer options enabled. Once it's enabled, you will see an all new option at the bottom of the settings menu, which will be called developer options. Just tap on this. Here we have got a huge list of options to customize your phone and some of them are meant for the developers. So you can use some of them such as the animation scales, you can reduce or increase the animation scales, USB configurations you can change, you can select mock location apps and many more features can be utilized from this menu. Alright now let's move to the next one. Let's go to settings, battery and device care, memory. Now if you have bought a phone which is already on One UI 4.1, we get to customize RAM Plus option here. As you can see we have RAM Plus. This is the virtual memory which uses the internal storage as RAM to improve app performance. Here we can select 2GB, 4GB, 6GB or 8GB. Depending on your preferences, you can select them. If you are already on 12GB, I think you can just select 2GB or 4GB because it's not really necessary. 12GB of RAM will be able to handle everything. Maybe in the future you would need these options. Let's move to the next one. Again, let's tap on settings. Let's tap on battery and device care. Tap on battery. Now tap on more battery settings. Here you must enable adaptive battery to limit battery usage for apps that you don't use often. That is the first thing you need to do on this menu. And if you are on S22 series, we have an option here, processing speed. Let's tap on this. We have got optimized, high and maximum. Optimized is the best setting you need to set. If you are someone who uses the phone for higher data processing, then you can select high. And then we also have an option for the maximum processing speed. It's always better to set optimized to balance the battery performance. And then we have got another option here on this menu. We have got protect battery. To extend the lifespan of your battery, limit maximum charge to 85%. This is an important feature. If you want to enable this, you can enable this, but this will charge only up to 85% of the battery. But in the long run, the lifespan of the battery will be better. Next one is setting a navigation bar or a swipe gesture. If you want to utilize the complete screen real estate, you can set the gestures on your phone. But if you are more comfortable with the navigation bar with buttons for your back, home and recents buttons, then you can select buttons instead of swipe gestures. To enable this, you need to go to the settings, display. Here you will see navigation bar. As you can see, we have buttons, swipe gestures. In swipe gestures, we have got more options as well. We have got swipe from bottom and swipe from sides and bottom. I usually set swipe from sides and bottom. It's more comfortable for me. So you can try these options and set it on your phone. We can also set the gesture sensitivity here. Let's go back. Here on the display settings, we also have an option called touch sensitivity. This will increase the touch sensitivity of the screen for use with screen protectors. I'm sure most of us use the screen protector on the phone. So make sure you enable this feature to increase the touch sensitivity. Next thing to do is turn off always on display if you are not someone who is into this because that is going to save a lot of battery. Of course, when you buy a brand new Samsung phone, you might want to keep this always on display turned on and play around with it. But that is going to conserve a lot of battery. So I usually turn it off. I don't suggest you to completely turn it off because you may want to have it on your lock screen. However, we do have some customization options for this. We will find this on the lock screen settings. So you need to go to the settings first and then tap on lock screen. Here we have always on display option. Let's tap on this and turn it on. As you can see, we have tap to show, show always, show as scheduled, show for new notifications only. So you can select one of them based on your requirement. I think tap to show would be a better option to conserve the battery. So go ahead and select this option on your brand new Samsung phone. 
Apart from all these things to do, we also have some features like Bixby routines, privacy permissions, etc. for which I have made separate videos. I will link them in the description. You can go ahead and check out the Bixby routines video, which will help you understand what exactly it does. You will be able to automate your phone by using this feature. So that is another thing you need to do when you buy a brand new Samsung phone. You can enable this feature. Just have a look at the video, which is there in the description. These are the first 15 things to do on your brand new Samsung Galaxy 4. If you are already a Samsung phone user and if you are switching from Samsung phone to another brand new Samsung phone, then I'm sure you will know better. You can add any other things which I've missed out in the comment section below. That's all I want to share with you guys in this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, smash the subscribe button and leave a like for this video if you find it useful. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.